What's up guys, my name's Fred. I've been doing street skiing for about 10 years now and today I'm gonna share with you some tips that'll help you to go hit your first handrail. When you start hitting street you want to find a nice mellow rail that you're comfortable to hit like a down rail or a down flat down and eventually you can move on to some bigger rails. What's fun about street skiing is that you can hit pretty much whatever you want. You can go to the park near your house, hit a barrier, a park bench or a picnic table. Or sometimes you'll find something at the spot that you can put before or after the rail. There's many different ways to get speed when hitting a rail. If you're lucky you'll have natural speed. If there's a small hill or some stairs that you can put snow on them, you can use that to gain speed. Natural speed is definitely the most fun and easiest way to hit a rail. The only thing is not every rail has natural speed, so you can't only rely on that. You can also build a drop-in made of snow. What's fun about it is that you can always leave it there if you want to come back to the spot. Just make sure it's not in the way of anyone. The only thing is it takes a lot of time to build and a lot of water. So you want to make sure your drop-in is really solid so it doesn't crumble. Another way to get speed is to have a Banshee bungee. Personally, I really like the bungee. If you get a good 20 feet, you can pretty much hit whatever you want with it. You can also get two 10 feet and attach them together with a carabiner. If you only have one 10 feet, it's harder to pull and you won't have as much speed. So you really want to get a 20 feet. If you want to hit a down rail, you only need one, maybe two people to help the skier pull the bungee. And if you want to hit something that requires more speed, you can always have three or four people. You want to attach the bungee on something that's besides the rail, so it doesn't get in the way. You want to make sure that there's no camera or anybody in the trajectory of the bungee. So if the bungee flies out of someone's hand, nobody gets hurt and the camera doesn't get hit. The bungee is also a really good backup tool. You always want to have the bungee with you in case you can't get enough speed. A big downside is that the company making the bungee, Banshee Bungee, is out of business. The good thing is bungees were pretty popular a couple years ago, so it's not too hard to find a used one. Once you start hitting more and more urban, you can always use a drop-in ramp or a winch. A drop-in ramp is very practical if you like hitting handrails, it will really save you some time instead of building a drop-in made out of snow. You can build a drop-in ramp made out of wood for about 50 bucks, or you can build one using scaffolding, which will be lighter and easier to assemble, but it will cost you a couple hundred dollars. The main downside of the drop-in ramp is that your car must have the space to carry it around. The winch is the ultimate tool if you want to get a lot of speed to hit a feature. With a winch you can pretty much hit whatever you want. Getting a winch is a big investment. North Pole is a company that sells winches and they start at $1500 US. You want to make sure that your winch is always filled up with gas and that everything works fine because mechanical problems can happen from time to time. Alright guys, so that's it for me today. Hopefully this video helped you to know how to get speed when hitting a rail. Let us know in the comments if you've had any experiences in the streets that might be helpful to others. I'll see you guys next week where we'll talk about shoveling the spot and building the lip. Yeah.